This short video shows the medial approach open reduction for hip dislocations and arthrogryposis with a focus on the Ledloff uh, method. The medial approach open reduction is necessary because closed reduction just doesn't work for reduction is ineffective. The medial approach is preferred because it's a minimal procedure and therefore less likely to create stiffness. It's a, it's a minimal procedure and therefore can be combined with other operations during the same operative session. And is best done between 6 and 12 months of age, both for unilateral and for dis bilateral dislocations. The types of hip deformities seen in arthrogryposis include flexion, external rotation, and abduction. In about a half of our patients, we also had dislocations, either one or both sides. The operative um, reduction approaches include the iliofemoral approach, uh, but I don't like this because it requires more extensive dissection, and then the medial approaches. Anterior, which is the blue in the Iowa approach in front of the pectineus. The Ludloff is red between the pectineus and adductor longus, and the Ferguson more posterior in green. And I prefer the Ludloff because it's the most direct uh, exposure to the pathology of the hip joint. If one is going to do multiple procedures, then it's important to drape the patient appropriately. And one should drape the entire lower part of the body so one has access to both hips, both knees, and both feet. One may do an orthogram, which will generally show the head to be wide and high. There is an often imposed limbus and capsular constriction. But don't be deterred by the high and wide dislocation. In my experience, these are basically all reduced with the technique we describe. Make the skin incision about three or four centimeters long in a transverse direction. Much nicer than the uh, vertical or the uh, longitudinal one is often described as it's nearly invisible and centered over the adductor longus tendon and place it just distal to the inguinal crease. The next step is to open the investing fascia and palpate with a finger to the lesser trochanter and use it as a guide for dissection. And uh, this will allow one to go basically to the hip joint using the Ludloff approach. Expand the exposure by gentle finger dissection of the area and then place retractors to visualize the psoas tendon and the lesser trochanter. First step is become oriented and do so and identify the iliopsoas tendon, the lesser trochanter, uh, the uh, dislocated femoral head outside held out by the tight iliopsoas and the capsular constriction. Next, identify the, the iliopsoas and isolate it with a kitner, open the blades and divide the tendon. This will allow the tendon to retract, which heals in fine. And then with the head dislocated, open the joint. Start anteriorly, extend the incision around posteriorly, and across the transverse acetabular ligament. These will eliminate the obstacles to reduction. Next, to reduce the dislocation, and do so by applying traction for several minutes. Abduct and flex the hip and rotate it, and at the same time palpate the femoral head through the incision and guide the femoral head from a dislocated position down to the true acetabulum so it has a concentric reduction. Next, uh, uh, focus on the additional problems. These could include a hyperextended knee with a tight quadriceps mechanism. This can be dealt with by simply a short incision midline and divide the, the retinaculum and the quad tendon, allow them to retract as one flexes the knee. And uh, this is a minimal procedure which helps substantially. The next step is to release the tight uh, tendons around the foot and the club foot. Release the posterior tip through a short incision. Also the heel cord by a percutaneous incision and also the toe flexors by a midline stab incision distal in the toe uh, through transversely through the flexor tendons of each toe. And in doing so, the foot is remarkably less stiff and this facilitates the continued Ponsetti type casting program. 
Next, determine the stable position of, of reduction of the dislocation and confirm the reduction by x-ray. So find the, the position that is safe as well as stable. Safe meaning that it's not extreme. And confirm this reduction by taking an x-ray. And then close the wound by uh, suturing with subcuticular foral absorbable suture. The next step is to apply the spica cast holding the reduction. The surgeon needs to hold the limb to properly position it. While the assistant applies the spica cast, the cast can extend out to include the toes of the child is a club foot and one is released to the foot. And then one is allowed to continue the Ponsetti casting by weekly cast changes that involve just the foot portion of the spica cast. In the post-operative management, remove the spica cast about four or five weeks and replace it with a brace. And this is to reduce stiffness and have the brace worn full time for about a month and then at night time tell about three like the Ponsetti uh, bracing for the club foot correction. Next, check for dysplasia by an annual AP x-ray. And if one finds dysplasia, correct it in early childhood by a pelvic and if necessary, a femoral osteotomy. This can be a Salder or a Pemberton procedure. They both work. The outcome of medial approach to open reduction amyoplasia we reviewed and published in Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics and we generally good results. Since that time, there have been a number of new articles published and I've reviewed these. And the consensus is that most uh, bilateral and unilateral dislocations in arthrogryposis should be reduced uh, early to prevent or reduce the risk of avascular necrosis. And this confirms basically our recommendations in our article. In summary, open reduction is appropriate for unilateral and bilateral dislocations in arthrogryposis. The medial approach is we think is optim optimal because it requires least amount of dissection, therefore the least amount of stiffness. It also allows one to combine operations because quick. And doing these multiple procedures in one operative session is ideal because it is especially important in these children who don't really tolerate uh, anesthesia very well. They're difficult to put to sleep and they get stiff and they don't like to have repeated periods of immobilization that cause additional stiffness. I wish to thank you for watching this video.